Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach, coming to you once again from the uh, bridge of my floating home. Uh, I was just having breakfast down below, and, and um, Stephanie and I were commiserating a little bit about some of the fears that we had when we were considering uh, buying and living on this boat full time. <laughs> and um, there was no shortage of them and things that we were concerned with and, and how would it work and and uh, uh, many of them have already come to fruition and you know what they proved to be no big deal and so uh, you know when you have things that are that you're fearing that are holding you back in uh, my latest book called just say yes I call those the what ifs well what if it doesn't work what if this what if that what if I get embarrassed what if I run out of money what if my family <laughs> disowns me you know what if what if what if what if I tank and lose everything and so there's all these um, fears that go on and you know what I say, um, what if it does work? You know, what if it does work? And by the way, what if every fear that you have actually happens, comes true, and you learn how to overcome it? You learn how to blast past it. So that happened to me. So one of the fears I had, well, let me think of, uh, there was three of them that I was chuckling about a minute ago over bowl of Cheerios. <laughs> I was thinking about what if I run aground? What if I run out of fuel? What if I hit something because I don't know how to drive such a big boat? All three of those have happened within the first six months. In fact, I ran aground uh, the third time I drove the boat and I ran aground right in front of the main dock at the marina we were staying at. And as luck would have it, there were people up on the dock and they're looking out and they're seeing me just stuck there, unable to move because I drifted ever so slightly out of the channel and I was sitting on the sand, <laughs> literally unable to move. But you know, something happened. The, the guy who uh, managed the marina came out and helped, he, he helped push me off, but he also told me about this trick to let out my anchor as far as I could. And in his boat, he took my anchor and, and tied it to the dock and then I used the machine called a windlass to help pull the boat. Little did I know, the next time we would run aground on the intercoastal waterway when we got out of the channel to anchor for the night, we were in five feet of water until we were not. And we were in like two feet of water and, and we need like three and a half feet to float. And um, so one thing we did is we, we waited for the tide to come in. And uh, then I got our dinghy, our little boat in the back. Hey, good morning, Cindy and uh, Joel. And so we got the dinghy out and this was pitch dark at night. Stephanie was out in the bow and I took our little inflatable boat out to the front of the boat and she lowered the anchor and 250 feet of chain <laughs> into the dinghy and then I backed the dinghy out 250 feet and I dropped it and, and then she kept using the uh, windlass to pull us. Can't watch you but listening in my car. Oh, okay. I thought there was something wrong with the video. Okay, Cindy. And so she used the windlass and we did this like at least two times so we are able to nudge the boat forward off the soft bottom. Uh, almost 500 feet until we got into just about three feet of water and I was able to goose it and, and get us off the sand. Um, the other thing we did, I was afraid, well, what if I run out of fuel? Well, guess what? We did that. <laughs> well, in one of our engines anyway, because the, the fuel gauges are not quite accurate. I now know because uh, I, tra I know how much fuel we burn by the hour and I track our hours. And so no matter what the gauges say, I know exactly how much fuel we have. And I've done it several times. Now, it just so happened we were off the coast of Atlantic City by three miles, and we have something called Cito. Cito came out and towed us in. I think if you follow on our blog, you saw that story where I got ridiculously seasick because we were bobbing on the anchor in about four-foot seas, and it was horrible. But um, I, that was a real, real lesson learned about the gauges, the accuracy, and how you have to track things multiple ways. Uh, one of the other fears I had was, what if I hit something? Well, guess what? When we went up to Red Island... I think it was in our second or third month of living on board. Um, this boat is 21 feet tall with all of the canvas and the glass. And, and so if there's our, if those crosswinds, I don't know if you've ever carried a sheet of plywood in a heavy wind, it just, boom, it, it takes you sideways. Well, I was, I was turning into this, I, I come into the fairway and I'm turning the boat and getting ready to back in the slip because there was a side wind. As soon as I turned, it started pushing me this way. And um, in the back corner of the swim platform, I hit the pier and I caused uh, $800 worth of damage to the boat. Had to have a fiberglass repairman come out and fix it. Now, I learned, and we've actually come up with a pretty good 
um, system where I can now um, I can I now know how much the wind affects us. So if I was to do that again, I would simply spin the boat pretty much in front of the slip next to me. The wind would push me down, and I and I boom back in. So every single thing is a learning experience. You get stronger and you grow when you overcome these adversities. The thing that I, I, I'm not going to say it almost got me, but when we were facing these some of these fears, it's like oh my god. I don't know if we can do this, but we did it. And we're, I tell you, we're having the time of our lives living. We're just living the dream lifestyle in this boat. And it's because we took swift and relentless action in every fear that we had, every little trouble spot that we had, every challenge that we faced, we've overcome. And it's just making us stronger. And it's just like that in your business. Well, what if Facebook doesn't work? Well, then you learn from it and you and you change up your ads. You change up the people that are that you're showing Facebook ads to. And, and you know, what if I go on a sales call and say, well, then figure out and change your vocabulary next time. Learn how to sell. <laughs> There's an idea. You know, all these different things that are holding you back. Well, what if, what if, what if? I would say, what if it does work? What if you decide to go forward? You know what a big thing with me um, because I talk to a lot of people who are potential coaching members, and one of the things I always get is, well, what's my ROI? Well, there is no ROI. There, I mean, there usually is, but it has nothing to do with me. So I can give you all the good ideas and coaching, and I can push you, hold you accountable, and I can create brands for you and things like that, but you have to execute. So it would be, I believe it's immoral and unethical for any coach to promise an ROI, but what I tell people is, how ridiculous would it be for this investment not to work? If, in fact, you're ready to implement swiftly and consistently and, and be part of this action-oriented group. So that's what I say. And so people go, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, that's up to you. It really is up to you. You know, um, I think success is possible for anybody. I think people can achieve wildly successful dreams. You can create dream businesses. You can create a business that will fund and uh, let you live your own lifestyle that you want, whether it's living on a boat or sitting on a beach going to Tahiti or Belize or just paying off your home and not working one or two days. Whatever your dream life means to you, that's cool. And the surest way I know how to get there is to become an entrepreneur. But don't become one of the 80 or 90% of entrepreneurs who just eke out a living working 50, 60, 80 hours a week and barely bringing home, you know, a little more or a little less than what they made as an employee. That is, that might be one thing. You can say you're your you're own boss and if that floats your boat, pun intended there, then that's cool. But why, if you start a business, would you not want to grow it to be wildly successful? And I'll tell you this, the difference between eking out a living and being what you might call successful in high levels of success is rapid, swift implementation and kicking your fears to the curb, stepping over every demon and saying, get the hell out of my way. I'm going to do this anyway. And you know what? If I write my book and it bombs and it sucks and people say, hey, you got horrible mistakes, your grammar stinks, but your book gets you five new clients, I would tell those people, hush up. I don't hear you. I wrote this book for the people who are going to be drawn to me as clients. And if I get on video and I make a mess of myself, well, so what? <laughs> because people are, are people will really respond to authenticity and just being yourself. And um, so there's a lot of things that are probably holding you back. And I want to tell you, when you're thinking about what if it doesn't work, what if fill in the blank, whatever that means to you doesn't work, I would say this, what if it does work? What if it does work? And by the way, what if every fear that I had actually comes true? What if I get in front of a group of people because I fear public speaking, I actually turn red and I stammer and I, I, I sway to and fro? And what if you get off the stage that night and what if you say to yourself, that wasn't as bad as I thought? You get on there again and then, you know, 10 speeches later, you're starting to kill it. 50 speeches later, maybe you're really, really becoming good. And then you learn how to sell. I mean, it all starts with baby steps. So don't let the what ifs get you down. Hey Steve, good morning. Don't let the what ifs get you down. You have to, you have to overcome those fears. You have to step forward. Um, I think the world, I think our country, I think every industry and every niche is made up of, of, uh, the vast majority of people, uh, who don't try. And then a certain amount of people who have an entrepreneurial dream, uh, do try and they achieve some level of success, but then there's a space at the top reserved for people who are relentless action takers and people who will have the chutzpah or whatever it takes to kick those fears to the curb and kick those demons the hell out of the way and move forward unafraid, unafraid of what other people will think because when you become unafraid of what other people will think, man, that is the superpower. 
that is the that is the power. Like if you've ever seen highly successful people, um, I don't know, Mark Cuban or you know uh, Richard Branson. You think of anybody who's achieved high levels of success. Do you think they give a damn about what other people think about what they're doing, how they're marketing, what they're saying? You know, charities they support and just go give money here and there. They don't care. It's what's what's real to them. It's what moves them. It's what motivates them. And they are so much less concerned about what other people think of them than 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 everybody below them. And that's why, um, you know, when I say the top one percent, top five percent is reserved for special people. It's not special people by any other definition other than those are the people who are willing to push forward and willing to push back past the fears. I had some, my heart, when I get on this boat after I signed the papers and owned it and I had to drive it three and a half hours, never having piloted a 50 foot boat with a thousand horsepower, my heart was beating out of my chest. <laughs> and um, sure enough, and I get to the, I get to the marina, haven't hit anything. And then I had to back in the slip for the first time. It took me 15 minutes to do so. And there were people on the dock giving me instructions, use the bow thruster, do this, do that. I shut it all out. And I just did what I did, and I did it, and I felt so damn proud of myself. You have to push back it. You have to push back. The older I get, the less I care. Steve, that's cool. You know what I call that, Steve? I call that the grandfather syndrome. <laughs> when I was a kid, and I remember my both my grandfathers are are both long since gone. But when I was a kid, I would look at my grandfather, who, you know, being a very old, much older generation, he said anything, and some of it would be probably d distasteful today but he would say anything and I said wow I guess when you're that old you don't care and I think that's true <laughs> whether it's the grandfather syndrome or not the older you get the less you care but I think that's a result of the more confident you are in your own abilities and confidence comes from success success comes from taking small steps little steps of success breed bigger steps so just start all right start where you are start with what you have and get going on your dream business what if it doesn't work? Who gives a crap? Do it again, do it again, do it again. Perfect it, learn from it, and keep going. So that's what I want to share with you today. I need to get off. It's uh, probably close to 9 o'clock. I'm going to start a bunch of calls today with my clients. And uh, we did a really cool training yesterday. I, I taught for almost 26 minutes on... Um, what did I teach on yesterday? I actually forget. Let me think for a second. Doggone, I forget. Anyway, it's at dreambizcoaching.com. It's a free Facebook group. And um, dreambizcoaching.com will take you there. It's free to join. Hey, Phil Brakefield, what did I teach yesterday? I absolutely can't remember. What was it? Shiny object. Oh, thanks, Steph. I taught on shiny object syndrome, how to overcome shiny object syndrome and kick that thing to the curb. Shiny object syndrome holds a lot of people back. Anyway, gosh, whew. My memory's like a colander these days. Good morning, Nelson. So go to, um, we have 135 members in this group already. Go to dreambizgroup.com. If you're on Facebook, you can just search Build Your Dream Business Now. It's a free program. Today is uh, Promotion Wednesday. You can tell all everybody else about your group and about what you're doing. Um, be a shameless self-promoter on, on Promotion Wednesday, but every Tuesday I'm doing free training, so hop on over to dreambizgroup.com and I'll see you there. I have to get downstairs and get ready to do my calls, but I want to uh, wish you a very, very good day. It's a wonderful day. Every day you get up and put your feet in the floor is a good day, no matter what you have to overcome. Who cares what if? What if it does work? Take care, everybody.